2024 Q&A panel sessions. My name is Tyler Marcano and I work with the Philadelphia Latino Arts and Film Festival. Uh, and we will be moderating this session with uh, some a lovely group of filmmakers here. Um, I'd like to give them the opportunity to kind of introduce themselves. We'll start with Daria um, and their film. Hi everyone, my name is Daria Milveses. I'm from Argentina, from the city of Cordoba. And we made a film with a co-direction co of Matias Amuelo that is called Children of the Century, Dance Between the Flames and Do Not Burn. <laughs> it's a long one. Um, it's a, film, a short film we made two years ago. <clears throat> and it talks about a queer uh, night scene here in the city of Cordoba. It, it, man, it tries to make like a critic of um, our bondings uh, uh, at night uh, between queers. Um, so it's a, a film we made with uh, $300. <laughs> we, we had like a fund that for us in Argentina, it's, it's, uh, we, we could make it last uh, for it to be filmed. Uh, so the film, uh, it's about three, uh, three friends that uh, managed to get to a party where uh, people are dancing to techno music, uh, but some uh, things uh, happen to them that um, kind of hallucinations uh, uh, that tells a little bit about the, their desires uh, between them and with, with the community. So uh, we, we were talking about that because we were having a time in the pandemics where uh, those kind of uh, places that, that functions as shelters for queer people here in Argentina uh, suddenly uh, closed as many things uh, did in the pandemic. Uh, so we were having like this lack of uh, places to join and to dance and to express ourselves. Uh, but also we had a critic about the, uh, the, um, the things about uh, 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 I don't know how to say my, my English is not so. Well. Good, take your time. <laughs> uh, so if you're more comfortable the, speaking in Portuguese, it's fine. <laughs> right. So the the things is like the the adrenaline they're having at the first minutes of the film drops out as uh, they start thinking about money, work, uh, and also lust and sexuality appear. So they uh, the film is like. Uh, it begins with a lot of adrenaline and it starts to dropping as these characters are involved with uh, those those kind of topics. So that is generally what is children of the century. Awesome. What about you, John? Hey, everybody. My name is John McKee. I'm the writer and director of Oasis. Um, it's a short film. It's a science fiction film, and the story alternates between a uh, time with an astronaut stranded on a desert planet and memories of his time in a more comfortable place with his partner and lover. And it's sort of the, 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 the juxtaposition of those environments and his emotional state as he um, navigates the context of each of, of each environment so um uh it's pretty simple i would say uh i wouldn't call it straightforward necessarily it's just a bit experimental but um that's the gist of it and um i'm looking forward to screening it at the festival awesome annie Manu? hello hello um my name is emmanuel I go also by an alias or like alter ego of Morena Espiritual. Um, speaking to you here from the islands of Borinquen or Puerto Rico, um, an Afro indigenous Caribbean queer person that makes music. I direct films and the film that I'm sharing with y'all is called Mi Coro, which translates to my crew. It is a film that interviews different Latin American vloggers, including myself, because I am a part of the roping dance scene. 
um, as a dancer, I'm also a chanter, I DJ, and it is a surreal, satirical short film that creates this world where people who are cisgender um, or outside of the LGBTQ community are these like aliens that are invading the queer <laughs> universe. And that's all I'll say about it for now. Thanks so much. Um, so when it comes to my questions, I come from a filmmaker background. I just like to ask questions that I think uh, every filmmaker has to have an answer to, I think. Um, I think ideas always have to come from somewhere. Um, we all have to work on the production at some point. There's commonalities. Um, so I think my first question always, and I'm going to lead with John, is um, where where did your inspiration for your film come from? Like, and or, and or where, what, what did... It incited you to to move and make this story and tell this story the way you did. Um, yeah, I'd had the idea of the astronaut previously, and I was working on it. Um, for the way that it came about in this version, uh, I was really inspired by a, a personal journey that I had. Um, in 2018 and 2019, I'd, I'd taken it upon myself to... Uh, really sort of work towards improving myself, like professionally and personally, um, working really hard, exercising and all that stuff like that, you know, everything like that. And I pushed myself too hard and I had a really, really horrible back injury that I had to come back from. And uh, it's, I, I'm still dealing with the effects. It's been almost five years, but um, part, of the, part of the journey back was um, reading and listening to speakers about mindset and motivation and one of the one of the um consistent themes across um the authors and the speakers that that I that I referenced was uh focusing on the journey and not the destination and so I structured the story around that sort of idea if, you, if you've seen it Tyler you, you you might know the ending is is pretty vague but I really wanted to end it on a note of he hasn't gotten where he's going but he's getting up and moving towards where he wants to be and um, the, the center of the film is him being distracted by that sort of discrepancy between where he is and where he wants to be. And that discrepancy in our own lives can really be discouraging if you look at it in that terms. But, you know, that, that, that the philosophy of getting up and looking at where you are and what you can do right now is what informed uh, the structure of the story. And I didn't want to do it too literally as far as, you know, making a character coming back from a back injury. I'm not really that type, but um, I thought it would be interesting to explore in that science fiction context, you know, make it a little more universal, you know, so I think the themes are are, are pretty relatable. And um, that's where the story came from. And I love that. Um, the idea of something so common or like, like a, a common experience a lot of people have to have. It really is the through line of your your film. I have seen I've, I've seen all your guys' films. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert, <laughs> I've seen every film in the festival. Um, and yeah, I think that that is, I this is why I love this question is because I think that all of these stories always come from a place that you wouldn't expect for where they result in. Like that idea of a sci such a sci-fi story that I, in my opinion, when I watch your film, it seems like it always feels like a conversation with a, with a guy in himself. He's talking to his own psyche and being like, no, we got to keep doing this. It doesn't matter the environment that we're in, because the, the whole point is that it's it, we knew that this was not going to be easy. And right. Um, exactly. And, and getting I, up I, and making that effort is... You know, I feel like that's something we can all, you know, appreciate in our lives and we have to be reminded of it all the time. Like I have to go back and, you know, speakers that really spoke to me, I have to go back and listen to their podcasts again or read passages from books, you know, almost on the weekly just because life, you know, comes at you in in, in various ways. And so just learning that, you know, reminding yourself that getting up and, and and trying is what really counts, you know, whether, you know, we may never get where we exactly where we want to be, but if we're getting up every day and we're trying and we're making moves towards that, then then, then we're that that's that's successful. That's being successful. It's getting up there and putting up the effort. 
Emmanuel, I'm curious your answer to this question. Wait, I'm sorry, could you say that again? I was curious your um your answer to like where did that inspiration come from for your film? Because your film is I I really enjoyed I remember watching the first time. I found it very, very, very funny. I thought this the satire hits very, very well. But I was always very curious as to how you came to that, the way it's packaged. Yeah, well, this short film has a very interesting origin. I think first came my album. Um, I made an album called Afro Caribe Punk. And so the sound that's in the song that's in the soundtrack of the short film is from that album. So I made the album first, and then I was wanting to make an accompanying like visual component that ended up turning into this entire short film. Um, and I got it commissioned by this group called Tour the Moon, which is based in Europe. So I was making it for it to premiere on tour with them throughout Europe for like this festival movement thing that they were doing like they were literally going through different um many different parts of Europe and like screening the short films and having parties and things like that and one of the themes of the um collective that gave me that commissioned me the money to do this video um was like outer space and the moon and also like science, right? So I came up with this narrative that like incorporated these elements, but still told like a very genuine story to me, right? Because I literally had a requirement of having to work with a scientist in some capacity. So I chose like the one of the least scientisty scientists. Like I feature an anthropologist um in the film because of that. Like I didn't just randomly decide, oh, I'm gonna cast this person. Like that was my scientist, right? Like that was a part of my requirements. Um and yeah, like instead of going directly to the moon, I made it an alien invasion, you know. Like it's a twist and and working around. I think especially um some filmmakers don't think about that type of stuff. That's something I've I've encountered before where you're like, I just I need this funding for this project, and then you start to see the requirements. You're like, all right, things need to shift a little bit, but we can still tell the story the way we need to. We just need to adapt and move things around. So that's really I I love the honesty because <laughs> I've been there. Um, Nadia, what what about you? What where was the inspiration for your film? I know you spoke about it briefly in the, the COVID stuff. Uh, we were in a, we study a film in the public university with friends that we made a film with. And we were in a graveyard um, talking about um, the nights that happened before, um, what we feel about uh, consuming and kissing and being around other people. So uh, we start, started telling stories. So the script came out as a, as a conversation. We, we just made like a collage of different stories that uh, uh, one of the, the actresses, she's a, a sex worker. So she had some talks, topics about um, telling about clients and stuff. So we made like a collage of those different uh, stories that was uh, about us, a group of friends. Um, and then we, we wanted to, to feel like, um, like a dream. Uh, it has like a, a kind of dreamy experience that the short film, uh, because it's all about, uh, emotions more than narrative. We were really questioned when people, uh, uh, watched the film. We were like, we were trying to make something to, to dance with, um, not so much to, to tell a story, but to, to feel, um, uh, what the characters are feeling. So uh, it has the origin in talking with our friends and saying, yeah, the night the night uh, uh, between us is great, but also has a lot of, uh, of uh, borderlines, you know, like some uh, stages where we feel like 
we don't have the money to pay for for it or we don't, we have to work the other day so uh it was uh thinking about the night and then what what it's what comes after the night that was like the what we were thinking when we started writing the the short film that's so cool that that's where it comes from because i remember when i watched it um that was one of the the things that I had we had discussed. Like after we do a lot of the screenings, what we do is we'll like continuously meet as we're making our way through all the selections and like discuss the ones that stand out. And I remember us talking about yours, and the, the thing that I had mentioned was that it, it really feels like you. Um, it tells a story indirectly, but not necessarily like a linear story. It's more telling you the story of a place or, or like the story of this environment. And I always thought that that was really, really interesting about yours. That's why I was curious. And to, to, to know that it almost came from like conversation and like a collage of all these stories, that makes a lot of sense. It almost paints the idea better than one singular story. And I, I think that's really, really cool. Um, I mean, we'll stay on you and go on to our next question. Um, but this is a question that is always fun because it can be in any stage of the process. Um, but I like this one as well, because this one's just every filmmaker knows that filmmaking is not easy. Um, and I wanted to ask, what is a, a challenge that you encountered on this film that like you just did not see? You didn't even think about. Like we all we all are like, oh, that might be a problem. That be a problem. What is a, a challenge you encountered on this film that like you were not expecting, but became something you had to overcome in the creation of this project? I can answer. You can go for it. <laughs> you can um, well, an unexpected challenge that happened during the filming process, I think it was that we had a different location planned than one of the locations that we ended up filming at. And we had to like improvise and find another location and move all of the equipment and all of the people um, on the same day. So that was really unexpected, but I was happy about how I handled that as a director. You know what I'm saying? In terms of like calling it and being like, honestly, I can't fight this. Like they're telling me to leave this space. I still need to film this. Like this is the day where everyone is available, what can I do? And we found another space and it got done and it served the purpose that it was supposed to serve. And it's something that like people watch the scenes and they would have no idea that, you know, that happened. Um, and also probably coordinating like the interviews of people because I also interviewed people in, in different locations and originally I was gonna interview an additional person um, who unfortunately didn't get to be featured in the short film because I had a limited amount of time to make it. A very dear friend of mine um, named Prince who is like a pioneer in the ballroom scene in Peru and yeah so that was also something unexpected because they were literally a part of my casting from the very beginning and I ended up having to like find somebody else within the amount of time because they were like going through so like really difficult things so the casting ended up being a little different well, about you John Uh, definitely had a location dilemma come out of nowhere for our shoot. Um, uh, you know, my, my earlier short films had been very small, um, a little lo-fi affairs, you know, and, um, we just stole locations, did it all guerrilla style. But for this one, I wanted to be a little more buttoned up largely because, um, you saw the spacesuit in the in the film. Um, that spacesuit is almost rent money for a week. Like you can live in a 
in a studio apartment for a month or rent that spacesuit for a week. And I didn't want to try to, I didn't want to try to um, uh, steal locations and then get shut down. And then, you know, who knows what we're going to do. So I, I, I had this location out in the Mojave Desert here in Southern California that I've been wanting to shoot for over a decade, like these, these, these beautiful rock formations. And so I went to, I tried to go to the legit route and get the permits, but permits here are very difficult. I had to go through the film commission, uh, parks and recreation for the state and the local county. Um, just, you know, everybody's paranoid about um, wildfires here in California. So I got the film commission on my side. I got their, their permission. I got the local county parks and rec denied my permit. They said they, and, and to, to, to get a permit with parks and rec and a shoot in California uh, national parks or state parks, you have to pay somebody a couple hundred dollars a day to make sure you're not setting anything on fire to come up there and watch you on set. And I didn't budget for that, but I was like, okay, well, I want to shoot this place. Let me do it. And then they called me back and said, well, we don't have anybody. It was, you know, we were coming out of COVID. We shot in late 22 and they didn't have the personnel. So they couldn't give me a permit. So I couldn't shoot. And I told them, it's like, there's going to be like eight of us. <laughs> there's no stunts. There's no pyrotechnics. None of that. Couldn't do it. I don't want to risk it. And this was about five days before we were supposed to drive to the desert. I had already paid for an Airbnb. It was too late to cancel it. So I lost that. Um, and I thought I, I, I was very close to shutting down the entire shoot, but I found a website. Uh, I'll give them a plug since they bailed me out. It was called spacer.com. And they're basically Airbnb for locations and found some private land about an hour or so north of Los Angeles that we could shoot all day long and not have any problems. Um, worked out better we got better terrain um as far as the versatility of the location we got we were left alone so that was great and uh yeah we, we pulled that together luckily at the last minute so we were, we, we were able to salvage the shoot it's cool yeah see i, I love that question because everybody everybody's had it everybody whether it's steel locations or a permit not coming through or something it's always something um what about you Daria? Uh, the same thing, locations. <laughs> we we wanted to film in a parking lot, um, and we were thinking about, uh, uh, for example, big big sceneries, um, and also, for example, the art department. Uh, they were thinking about um, really we we, we uh, in that place in the parking lot. It was the parking lot. I mean, we didn't, we didn't have much scenography, but then uh, we. It was uh, it was canceled a day before uh, filming. So we uh, at the at the end we we got a political party's base. So <laughs> suddenly it was uh, full of uh, messages, uh, pol political messages, uh, and it was thinking about if we wanted to to include them, uh, if if we wanted to. Um, so we had to paint some uh, walls and stuff to cover them um, with paper also. So we had the, the dilemma about um, locations. Uh, in the in the commentaries of, in the film, it's like an intimate conversation with this city. Uh, in fact, the, the distribution is meant to be uh, in, I mean, it's thought for Cordoba, for our city, because it was filmed uh, in the exteriors the city center and some places. Um, so the, the parking lot was an iconic place uh, of the city and we didn't be, got it. So um, but we, we, we ended up filming in a, in a political party base, <laughs> but it was fun. Um, and I think that, the, well, my I studied, in a, we studied in the public university in a free, free tuition here in Argentina. So, uh, we don't we don't have much budget we get as i said we filmed with three hundred dollars so uh that was it could it could uh be a, an like an overcome we had uh, we didn't have much money but we we tried we we got it we just made a a huge sangria um, <laughs> uh, uh for the party and some pizzas and we were done with that so it was like a learning about uh low budget uh, filming yeah 
I always feel like whenever I've done low budget stuff, though, it it, it always feels like like you're fighting for every shot. <laughs> it makes you value the shot so much more sometimes. Um, this is my personal favorite question. This is my always this is always my second to last. This is my personal favorite question, just because. Um, and I think I'm gonna start with you, Daria, because your film has the most intricate and longest title. Um, this is my favorite question though, because there's always a story, which is how did you land on the title of your film? I know I've written many a screenplay and none of them ever have the same name by the time they're a finished project. Um, so I'm really curious um, how you landed on your guys' titles. We'll start with you, Daria. The title comes from a poetry the, the main actress, Margot Saitseva, that's her name. Uh, it, it, it came from a poetry of hers. And also it was written uh, after a long night of partying. Uh, and it was like difficult because in Spanish, the name it's Iges, but it's with the D and the E, uh, it's the way to, to make words um, gender inclusive. So, and, and, and it was a statement because here in Argentina, uh, there were a lot of uh, discussion about how we name things. So we suddenly were, were naming the film Iges del Siglo, that it would be like children of the century. The same thing that it was children, uh, the, the, the translation was difficult too, because we were thinking about sons and daughters, um, but it's not sons and daughters. So we, 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 we got with children. But the, um, the statement of saying like Iges, it wasn't like a thing here, because at, at the same moment we, show the, the film at the first time that it was it, it was in the public cine, uh, cinema club, that it's also a public uh, a theater here in Cordoba. Uh, that that word was in discussion to talk in with E instead of O and A. So the name uh, says a lot in Spanish um, and it came out of the poetry that it, it feels like that. It's it, 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 the image is like, we are dancing in the middle of fire, <laughs> uh, but it's uh, it's like the the passion doesn't burn. Something like that says to I mean, we are in uh, among fire, but we don't burn. Like like in a positive way, we're still alive, but also in the in the sense of um, it's it's something that happens that like a tension that the film talks about doesn't burn, doesn't doesn't end it up. Burning, so that the title comes from from that. I, I gotta say, I love the title. I I think the title. Uh, by the first time I saw the title, I was like, I was very did not know what to expect. And I watched the film, and I was like, that makes it fits so perfectly. Um, what about you, John? How how do we? Yeah, you know that's a good question, Tyler. I, I, you know what? Um... I remember having a very hard time finding the name. Um, I tend to use one word titles. Uh, I'm the opposite of Daria. <laughs> so, I just like to have like a very simple, usually I have a theme that I go with, but um, uh, like my first one was called uh, Hustle. The one after that was called Anniversary. So I had a really, I went through a bunch of words. Uh, at one point I just called it Wander. I think that was my, my working title was Wander. Um, so at some points it was, it was just spaceman. I knew none of those would stick. And I, I, I honestly can't remember where I found Oasis, but somewhere I saw the word Oasis and it just clicked. Um, it sort of really encapsulated, uh, what I was trying to do with the story and what, I, and the way the story unfolded. So once I saw it, I think I was just looking up words and reading everything I could to to try to get ideas. And then I came upon the, the word Oasis and it was just like, it just clicked like perfectly, like, you know, just like a a puzzle piece, you know, the last piece of the puzzle. And um, I think it actually helped me once I figured that out, it, it helped me sort of nail down the last couple of drafts of the story. So, yeah. So I can't remember exactly where I found Oasis, but I'm glad that I did. It worked out really yeah. well for me. That one is interesting too, because I, I remember watching the film and I was like, Oasis is the perfect word to describe what these memories are for him. And the also the setting of it being uh this like astronaut on this like barren planet in the same way that like an oasis is in the desert. Like I I so that's so fascinating that you you had so many working titles 
because that really does feel like if it's it's exactly what your story is i think that's that's so cool again that's why i love this question because I, the answer is never what you expect Manuel, uh what about you how do we how do we land on that title well the title of my film very much came from the title of the song and the song got its title because it is a song that talks about self-defense. Like the beginning is, you know, it was my friend Suri at the time. I was in Mexico and she's a chanter in the vogue scene. And she's a part of this house called House of Carnadas. So the opening line is like, Camino siempre fuerte cuando estoy con mi carnalas. So she's like referencing her Vogue house, which is, you know, Vogue houses, they come from this concept of chosen family um, in the queer community, people who like are working together, supporting each other, as well as like training to walk these categories. And that very much set the tone for the title because it was like, how can we describe this sort of like need for self-defense and community, um, which is also you see in the film because we're like talking amongst friends, trying to understand what is going on in this like alien invasion. And so I chose Mikoro because being a person also who has descendants from Haiti or the island now known as the Dominican Republic um, and, and Haiti, you know, but like, yeah, that's, that's what, that's what I grew up saying as well, like Nicolo, like that's like the, the slang word and here in Puerto Rico, that's a very common slang word as well. Like people say tu corilla to talk about like your your group of friends, you know, or just to talk about general groups of people, like, ah, si, vamos con la corilla, para allá. So it was just like, I wanted it to be, I wanted Caribbean people to look at that and to be like, oh, I know what, I know what he's talking about. That's really important to, to my work as a Caribbean person and like, I, I try to feature a lot of Caribbean people and I want them to feel very seen and like identified in the visuals, the media and the things that they're observing. That's awesome. Yeah, I think, okay. So now we move to my last question, which is, um, you guys have been awesome. We're coming up only because I, <laughs> I'm running out of time here uh, before I have another Q and A, but this is my last question, which is, um, how do you guys hope audiences will react to your film? I think I want to start with John. Um, what do you think, or what do you at least hope audiences take from your film? Because I know as filmmakers, like once we finish the film, once we're done and we put it out, it's kind of not ours anymore almost, it's more it belongs to whoever watches it um, and what they interpret it as. So I guess my question is, how, how do you hope audiences react to it? Uh, well, number one, I hope they like it. <laughs> That's the first thing I hope. Uh, uh, I hope that, uh, I mentioned before, it's, it's, it's a little esoteric, I think, um, in the style of filmmaking, but I hope people understand that the ending is hopeful and not, um, like, I don't really consider the ending ironic. Maybe people might consider it ironic, but uh, I hope that they realize that the choice he makes at the end is a positive choice and a hopeful choice. And um, I hope it's not too vague. I, ho I hope they get the uh, the idea of pushing forward. Yeah. Uh, Dario, what about you? You, you asked me. Yes, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you that. Um, 
when we were writing the note from the directors, we put something that said like, um, we make films because it feels like screaming or dancing all night long. So, um, as, as I said, it's not, a, it's not about a narrative film, it's about a dancing film. So I hope uh, people that uh, watched it uh, feels, feel like dancing <laughs> or like screaming or like uh, talking to, to a friend about how they are feeling. Or thinking about their own nights, their own consumptions, their own bondings, community. Uh, but most of all, wanting to dance. <laughs> that is that. I love that. I love how simple that is. I because I get what you mean. Like, I want it to make you feel. That's it's really a like. That's that's beautiful. Emmanuel, what about you? Um, I, I want people to, to like consider other perspectives through my film. Like it very much is this exercise of like this parallel universe. And I incorporated actually, and was inspired by a lot of the things that people say to transgender and queer people, but I just kind of reversed the roles, you know? So it's like queer or trans people saying to like cisgender people things that usually they say to us. Um, and yeah, because I, I just want people to really think about it. You know, I want people to like put themselves in somebody else's shoes and consider what the experience could be like. Um, and not just with gender, just with many things in life. I think it's a good practice, uh, a good practice in empathy. Yeah, I like that. Well, guys, I just want to say thank you so much for your time coming to today's panel. Um, I'd like to remind audiences that you can learn more about FLAF uh, and any of the films that we're discussing at uh, FLAF.org. Thanks for joining us and stay tuned for more updates from the Philadelphia Latino Arts and Film Festival.